if I were wearing different shoes, I would be that person. Right. Don't mind if I set this up right here, just to videotape great. the awards. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Sherry Diamond. I am the CEO and general counsel of this Santa Clara County Bar Association, and I am thrilled to be here with you for another Judges Night. Isn't this a beautiful evening? It was, I, I created it myself, thank you uh, for that. <laughs> um, uh, before we launch right into awards, there is a, a cocktail party going on downstairs. People can linger here, uh, go downstairs. You're welcome to float between the two spaces. So once the award ceremony concludes, it's up to you. Visit your friends downstairs, remain up here, however you'd like to play it, this is your night, um, and we want to give you as much time and space as possible to meet with your friends and your colleagues and hopefully make some new ones. Um, before we begin, I want to make some special thank yous to our sponsors. Uh, as you know, the Bar Association is a tax-exempt organization. We rely on membership dues and the revenue from events like this to provide you the services that you want and that you deserve. And you'll be getting um, an email from me uh, by the end of the week that lets you know just how much um, additional benefits and services this bar will be providing you um, in the new year, including inclusive CLEs. We asked you why you joined the bar and you said CLEs, so we're gonna make them available to you at no additional cost um, on top of your dues and uh, you can go to as many as you want. Um, our sponsors this evening, um, I wanna thank, hang on, I gotta get my, I gotta get on the right page. Here we go. Our platinum sponsors are Hoover Kropelka. Give it up for Hoover Kropelka. All right, largest uh, law firm in California, family law firm in California. Lonage Patton, Erlich and Paula Castri. Where's Elpe? Thank you, Elpe. Um, BJ Fadum, Fadum Law and Associates. Thank you, Fadum. BJ's my savoir faire. He is everywhere. Morrison Forrester is here tonight. Thank you, Mofo. Right, we're happy to have you. Uh, Richard Alexander of Alexander Law Group. He couldn't be here this evening, but his checkbook is, and we appreciate him very, very much. Uh, Hoke Fenton is in the house. Thank you, Hoke. We appreciate you so much, Platinum Sponsors, and Jams. Jams, thank you so much for your support um, for just about everything we do. Uh, we appreciate you very much. Our gold sponsors are Berliner Cohen. Thank you, Berliner Cohen, if you're in the house. Let's hear it for you. Masum Law, thank you so much. I met some of you this evening. I appreciate you. Uh, McManus Faulkner, uh, Jim McManus and his crew, always there for the Santa Clara County Bar. Thank you, Jim. And Hopkins and Carly. Hopkins, Carly, thank you so much. You are our gold sponsors. Let me take a moment to give an extra shout out to Berliner Cohen and McManus Faulkner. Uh, they, in addition to sponsoring this event, they have sponsored numerous uh, uh, in-person programs throughout the year, lending us their space, providing the libations for our in-person seminars, and we really, really appreciate that. As you know, the bar is now operating 100% remotely. So we rely on our law firm partners um, to help us out when we want to have an in-person event and bring all of our friends to you. Our silver sponsors this year, ADR Services, thank you so much. Sailor Legal, a Gemini legal company, uh, Clio, uh, and you know that Clio is one of our uh, affinity partners. If you're not using Clio and you'd like to, you can find a link to Clio on our website and get a discount on their services for your practice. 
Bergeson LLP is here. Thank you so much, Bergeson Law. Seabrook Law Offices, thank you for being here. Uh, we appreciate you so much. Mesner Reeves LLP, thank you, Mesner. Uh, Mesner supports this event and many of our Women Lawyers events. And last but certainly not least, Greenfield Law, Mr. Bernie, who probably needs no introduction. I'm not sure, I haven't seen him yet, but thank you, Greenfield Law. So those are our sponsors. Can everybody just give a big round of applause and thank you. We could not do this without you. Thank you so much. Um, it's my pleasure now to introduce to you the president of the Board of Trustees, uh, Mr. Richard Schramm of Hoke Fenton. Um, he is going to introduce each recipient uh, of the awards tonight, and I'll present them their award. Photographs are absolutely welcome. Um, I would appreciate you sending me anything that is um, that shows me in a flattering light. <laughs> Um, no, I won't. I won't make you. I won't challenge you for that. It's just too hard. Um, but uh, please uh, give a warm welcome for Richard Schramm. I have five things to say to start. Hope Fenton. Hope Fenton. Hope Fenton. Hope Fenton. And Hope Fenton. <laughs> Before I left the firm this afternoon, they said I have to mention the firm at least five times tonight. <laughs> Took care of that. Got that out of the way. Uh, jurist of the Year is our own Honorable um, Sunil Kulkarni. And uh, Judge, we uh, I'm not going to go through and just write, write, go through the order of all the things that you're already reading in your booklet about their background. But what I want to do is just emphasize a few things about each one of the candidates, and then I'm going to let each one of them speak for just a few minutes. But one of the questions that they don't know they're going to have to answer when they come up in front of you tonight, you ready for this, Judge? All right. We didn't prepare you for this. If you were talking to a new lawyer, what would be the best advice that you would give that new lawyer if you could talk to them tonight and tell them something? So let me tell you about Judge Kulkarni. He joined the bench in 2013, and although he's on the civil bench now, he's, he's handled criminal matters in the past, and he was at Morrison and Forrester for 13 years and had a long career practicing law outside of Morrison and Forrester also. We have to use the correct name now. Is everybody ready for the correct name? UC Law of San Francisco the law school name. So I'm trying to get to the correct name early before all the transition occurs so everybody knows what that is. But Judge Kulkarni has been recognized as a trailblazer in the areas of diversity and equity and all those kinds of areas where we're talking, to be, talking about being inclusive. I don't know how many of you have looked around tonight. We did this earlier before we started. And we asked ourselves, those who were up here, look at this group. How does this group look in terms of diversity and in terms of opportunity and in terms of gender expression as compared to 50 years ago in the 1970s? Think about that. We have made revolutionary progress. We are making progress. And we're going to do even better with judges like Judge Kulkarni and all the other members whom we have on the bench. And finally, the last thing I'd like to say about Judge Kulkarni is he's been sponsoring the civil practice uh, group once a month. And for those of you who avoid that group, you don't get the benefit of his teenage daughter's cookies, <laughs> which he brings to the courtroom and sets down on the plaintiff's table for all of us to eat every month. So I just want to let you know that he does something special, and as the jurist of the year, I give you now Sunil Kulkarni. Thank you. Well, thank you, Richard, and the advice I would give to a young lawyer 
of course, is to join the Santa Clara County Bar Association. That's what you want, right? Yes. Oh, good. I got it. Okay. Well, thanks to both of you. I'm very honored by this award. I'm also very privileged to receive this award in the company of my fellow awardees. Um, they are spectacular, and I'm not so much. Um, if anyone has ever appeared before me, you know what I want. I want clear signposts when you argue, and I want you to be short, and I want you to be funny. The funny part usually doesn't happen, but um, we'll see if we can do the rest. I, I want to first do thank yous. Um, thank you, of course, the Bar Association. Thanks to the leadership of the Bar Association, to the Civil Practice Committee, and more importantly, thanks to all of you. All of you make up this association. All of you do your part for justice, and that's so important in today's work. I also want to thank um, places where I worked before who helped me become a lawyer. Uh, Morrison Forrester is here. Um, I used to work at the University of California, and they helped me and shaped me into what I am now. I also want to really thank my fellow judges and court staff. The judges that we have are among the smartest, but more importantly, most humane people to do justice. And they try really hard, and that's important. I know when people are unhappy with the ruling, they think they may not be trying so hard, but our judges really care, really care about trying to do the right thing, and that's so important. But to make justice occur requires staff, and our staff is spectacular. You're gonna hear from one of them, Jonathan Kahn, in a few minutes, but our clerks, our IT staff, everyone in the court really cares about trying to make uh, this world a better place, and also to help litigants and attorneys get their jobs done. And I really want to thank Rowena Walker, who, if you know, is kind of the heartbeat of the court, and she is the current complex case coordinator, and if you've ever dealt with her, you know she knows everything there is to know. And so she's just one person among many who make the court run. And of course, I want to thank my family. Um, uh, I think that my kids are here, at least one of my children is here, Leela, the baker is here. My older daughter is doing college applications or studying for finals or I don't know what she's doing, but she couldn't be here. Um, but they've grown up on hearing about law. They've grown up helping me decide if someone punches someone in a bar fight, how many days of picking up trash they have to do. And I admit, I usually rely upon their advice. Also, my wife, Sujatha. She has been with me every step of this way from thinking about the bench, to applying to the bench, to becoming a judge, to making sure that my head doesn't swell too much. She likes to note that my hat size is, my head size has grown two sizes since I became a judge. No, seriously, went to India, I tried to get a hat, no hat fit, my head was too big. And she makes sure that doesn't happen. So thank you, I love you so much. Um, all right, so let me get in my soapbox just for one minute. Um, the reason I became a judge besides justice and helping people, was really realizing there are a lot of bad judges out there, and I can do better than them. And I think it's important for lawyers to think when you see a judge, I can do just as well, or I can do better. And there are lots of people here. Richard was talking about the diversity that we have, and that's something that we really want. We want our bench to be as diverse as, our, as California, and as this legal community. We have a program locally for, for judicial mentoring. Anybody who wants to apply to become a judge, especially those from non-traditional backgrounds, are welcome to approach the court. You'll be set up with a mentor, and they'll help you through the process. And we want to encourage people to join the bench. We need more good people. Whether you're a prosecutor, whether you're a public defender, whether you're in civil practice, whether you're a family lawyer, whether you're in-house, it doesn't matter. We want good people. And so if you're gonna to talk to me afterwards, please do. Uh, I'm co-chair of that program. Our other co-chair, Judge Rodney Sane, is here as well. Talk to us. We want more good judges. Okay, off the soapbox. Um, finally, and I said I'll keep this short, thank you so much. I appreciate it. When I travel around the state and people ask me where I'm from, I'm proud to say that I'm part of the Santa Clara County legal community. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
pretty smart, eh? <laughs> Quite dapper. I don't think we did this intentionally, but we are rotating between judges and uh, judges to be, which are the lawyers in this room. Um, I hope all of you know that we're here because we've taken an oath to uphold the Constitution and the rule of law. That's what we're all about, and that's why we're here, and that's why we're encouraging each other to do things. And I want to talk about an attorney who became uh, an attorney and began practicing in 1985. And this attorney previously served a stint with the San Jose Police Department. And in addition to that was an insurance investigator. And if you know this attorney, you know that he has quite a significant collection of guitars. In fact, when the, if the night uh, goes on tonight and you don't ask BJ Fatum about what kind of guitars he has, you're doing yourself a disservice. Uh, it is a tremendous collection. Uh, B.J. not only is a family lawyer, but is involved in some very complex issues that a lot of you may never have heard about involving the Hague Convention, international family law issues, interstate family law issues, and B.J. was also involved uh, partly in the design of the new family law courthouse. Um, B.J.'s focus has been on mentoring other attorneys, and for those of you who know how many attorneys have gone through B.J.'s firm, uh, you know that BJ has done exactly that. I first became acquainted with BJ in an elevator. Uh, I believe this was uh, 1991, and I noticed that BJ and I were on the same elevator almost every day, and then I discovered that uh, my office was right below BJ's chair uh, in the floor above me. And one day I went up there and visited one of the attorneys and discovered that it was a green velvet chair. So my image of BJ over the last 30 years has been someone sitting in the green velvet chair like someone who's a, a prince or someone in tremendous authority. BJ doesn't want to be known that way, but we now have selected BJ as the professional lawyer of the year. Come on up, BJ. First of all, I feel dwarfed among the other honorees. I mean, they're magnificent. I mean, I've, I have looked up to Bob my entire life. And Judge Shari, you've been kind of my hero up on a pedestal. And Judge Kilcarney, working with you has been magnificent. But uh, this is a team effort. It's my team. And I have one of the best law firms, I think. Um, they're my family. I love you all very much. And my wife of 30, Years. <laughs> Help me build it. Uh, and we built a really nice, I think, law firm of people that we all think alike. We just want to help the community. And this county has the best bench and bar that I've ever seen, which is why I'm so involved with the bar. We so thank you all very much. Happy day. Happy day. By the way, we are trying to make this uh, for you a uh, presentation, total presentation of under 45 minutes so you can use the rest of the evening getting to know each other. So now you know what the, our goal is. And BJ, you uh, skipped out on our question. What would be the one piece of advice? You're the mentoring attorney. The one piece of advice you might give to a new lawyer. Do you want to come up here and get 30 more seconds of fame? <laughs> person to ask because I teach at Santa Clara and I try and talk my students out of finishing law school and go into another profession. <laughs> so I tell them run now 
No, I think the most important thing, and I think this is what I tell all the little attorneys that join my firm. The most, my daughter asked me years ago, what is the most important thing in a person's life that you would say? And as far as their um, personality or their goal, I said integrity. And so all I can tell every young lawyer, your integrity is everything, your reputation. And that's what I would give you is just be passionate about what you do, enjoy it, and just have integrity in everything you do. Thank you. Our next award goes to the uh, Court Professional of the Year. Um, I don't know how many of you have long memories enough to remember service in the Peace Corps, service in Volunteers and Service to America, VISTA. The kinds of things that we talked about after I got out of college, but that, doesn't, that don't get talked about too much today. Our next nominee is someone who did serve in the Peace Corps. In addition to being in the Peace Corps, um, he decided, I'm going to learn how to practice law. And in his, in his decision to practice law, he went directly to the courthouse and began serving in our courthouse as a staff attorney in the probate court division. I'm talking about Jonathan Kahn, John Kahn. The other thing about him that a lot of you don't know is what has he done with his Peace Corps background, his language background, and his service background. He is dedicated and he's got a focus on helping people who are primarily Spanish speakers with their difficult legal issues at the courthouse. How many of us can say that we're willing to trade our second language to assist those who come to the courthouse and need that help? Let me introduce to you Jonathan Kahn, our court professional of the year. Thank you. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, all right. Uh, I'm really flattered and honored to receive this award, and um, I was really excited, and then I got a little depressed because I was thinking, I'm 43, I think, I think this might be the only award I ever won. <laughs> but then I thought back, something came to me, I said, no, that's not true. Uh, 1996, San Mateo High School, cross country, most improved. <laughs> uh, th this may shock you guys, but I'm not a natural uh, long distance runner. Um, I, I won that award because I, uh, I was training for the wrestling team, I wanted to run, and I started the year every race in dead last, and then Probably by the end, I was like in the bottom third. So that's inspirational, most of um, And as, as I thought about that old award, I was thinking it, it sort of matches what this is in a way. Uh, when I got this job, I was uh, replacing Bob Collier, who's an institutional figure. And I really felt like I was at the back of a difficult race. You know, how do you, how can you catch up? How can you come from being a uh, mid-level, you know, trust in the state's private practitioner, doing a lot of living trust, to explaining to the judges all the nuances of probate law and guardianships and emergency conservatorships. Uh, you know, you can. Um, so the way that I caught up in that metaphorical race is um, with a lot of help. I uh, worked with um, Bob Collier as he was retiring. He helped train me. Um, judges Peg and Judge Amity, um, really trained me how to do this job. I think the way the job is supposed to work is I train them on what the law is, what their options are. It was the opposite at first. I was just listening and learning. Uh, so I do want to thank them. Um, I uh, work with the pro, I think the unsung heroes of probate are the examiners and the filing clerks. So they've got a, a deep experience. I learned from all of them. Um, and I, I learned from the other judges I work with as well. Um, uh, Judge. Uh, Takichi and Judge Arroyo, who I'm currently working with, and I worked with Judge Adams um, doing guardianships for a, a period. So it's been a real honor to work with them. I've learned each judge has a different style, uh, different approach, and it's it's been a huge education. So 
Um, yeah, I just want to say thank you. It's a real honor. Um, if I had to give advice to a new attorney or law student, I would just say that uh, you have to care. There's going to be a lot of nights and weekends and long hours. You you have you actually have to be interested in the outcome, or it's uh, it's going to be a burnout. So I do care about probate. I find it very interesting, very rewarding, and uh, thank you. try to conceal Jim Towery's name. Uh, anyone who's been around this county for the last 50 years uh, knows uh, Jim Towery both when he was practicing law and I get to say it a sixth time at Hope Fett. <laughs> and uh, before that he was uh, practicing law at uh, Morgan and Towery and Jim has been uh, both the president of our Bar Association, he used to have the job that I'm standing here filling out tonight, 1989, and he's also served as president of the State Bar, and he's also served in a number of uh, ethical and uh, fee arbitration positions in which actually he and I shared information many years ago about how to handle a number of different issues. But uh, Judge Towery was admitted to the bar in 1977, He's actually been a member of our Bar Association since 1978. I don't know how many of you can beat that. But we're giving to uh, Judge Towery the Lifetime Achievement Award. Associate, lawyer, partner, law firm committed, been on the bench until uh, his recent retirement from family law, and he's had the privilege of having at least six attorneys whom I interviewed in family law who said we were sad to see him leave the bench. He was fantastic on the family law bench. We wish he hadn't retired. Jim Towery.
doesn't change the fact that we want to try to apply that code of professionalism in all of our interactions. I am proud of these bar association. They have done so much. They have been a stellar bar association in the state. I am very grateful for this. I also, of course, need to thank my wife, the independent interim police <laughs> auditor for the city of San Jose. For the city of Chicago. <laughs> but, but, but she told me she was retired a while back. She's not retired. But I have so many friends in the audience here that played a role in this. It was none of what I've done has been a solo effort. It's all been a team effort. And I'm very appreciative of this award. Thank you. Thank you. see the hands of everyone who has run a complete 26 mile marathon from start to finish without stopping to walk. How many people do we have there? All right. Now let's see the hands of all those who have done it 20 times. Our next nominee is the 20 timer. How many of you know what Jumar Ascenders chocks and uh, carabiners are, all three of those, a few of you. Our next candidate knows what those are, Bob Hoover. <laughs> Bob Hoover has been practicing law uh, since 20 years before I was born. <laughs> Hope Fenton. <laughs> That's not true. Um, he was also an Air Force instructor, and he's done a multitude of things before he got into the practice of law and began focusing on family law. Um, Bob has put together 18 marathons and two ultra marathons under his belt. And if you haven't talked to Bob before, he is a man of tremendous wide interests that have contributed to what he has done in his distinguished service to our Bar Association over these years. We're giving to Bob our Distinguished Service Award, and I introduce you to Bob Hoover. I love you, Dad! Well, this is really great. This is it's unbelievable, and I so appreciate this. It's, it came as a, as the staff knows, it came as a great surprise. But I do want to thank the, uh, the bar, and I want to thank the uh, people that have made this possible for all of us tonight. I want to thank my wife, Gail, my daughter, Mary, <laughs> son, Jim, and all of the uh, Hoover Propelka that are here. Uh, the, uh, Master of Ceremonies made a comment. He said, we are going back to the 1970s. I go back to the 1960s. And what I'd like to do in the few minutes that have been granted to me, to say that th this, this is a wonderful experience, primarily because I can see all of you. I can see the beauty. I can see the diversion. I can see the, the optimism. And I remember the first time that I attended a function like this. It was in 1960, I think it was at Hawaiian Gardens in San Jose. And there were uh, uh, all men, all white, old men, and there was one woman. And those of you that are curious about the uh, people that have uh, populated the bar, uh, you will find that in 1960 to 1965, there were exactly six female lawyers there were 634 male lawyers. Less than 1% of the attorneys in Santa Clara County were female. At that first meeting, there was one female lawyer there, and she was 29 years old. I was 29 years old. We were really surprised. There was a lot of cigar smoking and bourbon and a lot of laughs and jokes and things like that. And so uh, gradually as time went on, I practiced with her. And then 
1975, she said to me, Bob, I've been appointed a judge, but they won't give it to me. And I said, well, what are you going to do? And she said, I'm going to sue. And I said, well, that, 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 has this been tried before? And she said, yes, it has, and it's failed, but I'm still going to give it a try. So then the next I hear is that she has won uh, her case before the Supreme Court of the state of California, and it was Marilyn Zecker. And Marilyn Zecker then, uh, yes. And then Marilyn Zecker asked one afternoon if I would stay in her department and stay in her, her uh, uh, courtroom for just a few minutes because uh, actually in her chambers because she said she wanted me to meet her daughter. And so she, her daughter came in. She was slender, she was beautiful, and she was uh, excited, and she was sub teen, and her name was Vanessa Zecker. And so uh, that is some of the history. Uh, something that I wanted to share with you. Uh, and looking at all of you, you're beautiful, and the diversity is wonderful. And uh, I, the advice I would give to young lawyers is to uh, something that Shakespeare has said, and uh, it goes like this in The Taming of the Shrew. Be as lawyers be, as lawyers do. Fight mightily in court, but drink and, and eat as friends. So, uh, so I have, I, I have one, one further, and that is BJ, uh, I've known him all of his professional life, and uh, one of the first things he told me that he had been training for the Olympics, and because of his sickness, he wasn't able to attend and win. But uh, thank you so much, this has been a great honor. Uh, my advice, uh, is, as I've said to, to young attorneys, would be to fight my league and be the greatest friends. Thank you so much. no introduction. Thank you what you do for what you do for this bar, but more importantly, what you do for the people you serve. Um, and of course, uh, Judge Cole Carney. Um, thank you so much for your dedication to this bar. Most people don't realize how much Judge Cole Carney does, um, how much he involves himself in our programs, our activities, our planning, our, you know, he's a, a terrific resource uh, for questions and answers I go to him often. So thank you. Feel free to do as Shakespeare has bid us. Let us eat, let us drink, let us enjoy one another's company, both here on the rooftop and downstairs. It's all open. We have the space until about 8 o'clock.